Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here with our program head, uh, Climate Smart Land Use, uh, Hans Schotten. I don't know if I pronounced well, <laughs> uh, but we are here because uh, we want to celebrate peatlands. Uh, yesterday it was World Peatlands Day, but also uh, because of the EU Green Week, uh, which is um, um, uh, which is talking about uh, the EU Green Deal this year, and in particular, how to make uh, the Green Deal real. And uh, Hans will uh, explain to us uh, why peatlands are so important for uh, the EU Green Deal, and how peatlands can contribute to make the EU Green Deal real. So Hans, the word uh, is yours, uh, and please uh, tell us about peatlands. Thank you, Leah, and thank you for inviting me to contribute to this uh, to this series. Um, yeah, let's 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 pick that up. Why are peatlands important in the EU New Green Deal, and why are peatlands important in Europe anyway? If you look across Europe, and the most recent figures from uh, coming out from Greifswald Meyer Center show that we've got around 600,000 square kilometers of peatlands in Europe. That's a massive area. That's a big area. They are, you know, they are responsible for about 5% of the, the greenhouse gas emissions. The drain peatlands are responsible for about 5% of, of the greenhouse gas emissions from, from Europe. So that's 1 20th of the total of the greenhouse gas emissions. So peatlands are, are a huge area and peatlands are important for the, for the EU in terms of its climate footprint and the climate um, greenhouse gas food footprint. So that is important from that perspective. But also if we look a bit more in detail, we also see that about 80% of the, of the peatlands in Europe are not in protected sites. So only looking at it from a protected site aspect it's just not the way forward. It's just not the way because we, we miss 80% and we miss the great, the great bulk of the peatlands. And those peatlands that are important and that are outside protected sites, a lot of them are under agriculture and a lot of them are in the, in the, in the land use. So we really need to see, and that's why the new Green Deal has really starts working because we then need to think about how can we work with the land managers, with the communities, and with the people that live in and around and, and, and live off the land to make sure that they are there they are and connected to it. So that is really important for us because as I said, it's big, it's significant for Europe and it needs to tie in with people. If you think for example, um, around peatlands that, that we are, that if you think for example to, um, to Ireland, um, in Ireland we had a lot of of peatlands were being extracted there for fuel and for horticulture. The Irish government about a good year ago, year and a half ago, decided to stop the extraction from the Bortnam owned, the state funded um, the state um, um, owned peatlands. And we are now working hard with the Irish government to re rehabilitate and restore them. And that's really important because that is a big area and there is significant money to do that. So what we see there is that those areas are also not always the, the, most, um, the most economic prosperous areas. So there is a big history, a proud history of what we used to do in terms of land management, but we need to turn that around and we need to make sure that those communities living there can and can live of the, of the proceeds coming from that. And there's several ways of doing that, Leah. Yeah, there is, for example, you can think about um, the um, the products coming from it, yeah. One one way of how we could do that is, for example, polluticulture. And polluticulture is really um, agriculture on on peat, but then bringing that water table up to that surface. So on one side, you stop the greenhouse gas emissions from that. So that that five percent you start reducing significantly. And on the other side, you still create a valuable crop. For the community so there's a livelihood there is income coming from it we've got good experience and together with drive up my center and others there's really good experience for example to harvest typha reed maize yeah from that and turn that and turn the the, the fibrous fibrous material into into building materials turn it into packaging materials 
So there is a really good way on how to move that forward. What we didn't need to do there is actually move that forward from pilot scale to landscape scale, yeah? From we need to upscale that. So it goes into mainstream um, materials and mainstream business, um, uh, business supply chains. Another way on how we can use fibers is, for example, for clothing. And we see, for example, that um, there is a small startup company, for example, in, in the UK, Saltico, who is now working to, to utilize fibers from, from peatlands and turn that into, into um, um, textiles and textile materials. So there is, again, a high value crop coming from it. And therefore, the people that are farming the, um, the typha or the reed maize on, the, on these high water tables are really getting a good in income. So the communities are protected. Another opportunity, Leah, for example, would be to think about another crop such as um, 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 sphagnum, the bog moss. In Europe, the sphagnum is especially on the, on the bogs. So on the rain fed peatlands, sphagnum is the main peat forming material, the moss that holds all the water and that acts like as a sponge. That's really already, if you bring that back, that will keep the water there, acts as a sponge and stops the, and mediates the flow of water coming from it. So it stops flooding further downstream. It creates higher water tables in the summer. So that as a result, there is more water for irrigation. And for example, and also more water that can infiltrate into the groundwater. So for example, we see in Europe that there is more and more droughts coming and more and more floods coming. So keeping the, the landscape wet and keeping the sponge full and keeping that active gets us in a better situation that we manage the water better. This factum itself, we can harvest. Yeah, we can manage that in the right way. Another culture crop where we actually can harvest that and turn that, for example, again, into, insula into insulating materials. But there is another really good opportunity there, which again cuts two ways and turn that into, into um, growing media or into compost. Yeah, so we can actually grow the peat that we need for the compost rather than extract it. And again, if we can do that in sufficient areas, and we've been working with companies now and starting to calculate that, we can actually say, let's go, instead of extracting peat for horticulture, let's grow it. And let's turn that industry around and make it a really profitable industry whereby we grow it and we can then use it to grow our plants on. And that's really started to kick off now. So for me, now thinking about it now, and I don't want to take a huge amount of your time, thinking about the new Green Deal, whereby it's all about long-term sustainable management of the landscape in harmony with people and the environment. So I think there is a real good future for the mismanaged peatlands and the drained peatlands in, in, in Europe. They're responsible, as I said, for 5% of the greenhouse gas emissions from Europe. But if we re-wet them, and especially if we re-wet them outside the protected areas, we can turn that into profitable crops. What we need to do is then bring the communities on board because that's where the livelihoods and that's where the long cavity is for protecting these peatlands. But we really need to work with industry and with the supply chain industry to bring these crops to the market and to really turn that into profitable business. So for me, the new Green Deal is all about peatlands. There's massive opportunities. And I really look forward to working with, with companies and communities around Europe to do that. As you probably know, Leah, and I just wrap it up then, there is a whole series of amazing research projects on the go at this moment in time. For example, um, there's two that and there is a whole series of European funded research projects that are really fi filtering into that. Yeah, and, there's, and uh, uh, we can uh, make them available on the list of that available outside this podcast so, we, so people can tie into that. And uh, Hans, can I just ask you, um, if you can uh, maybe leave a message uh, for the upcoming uh, EU nature restoration law. You know that it was expected in March, uh, but then it might be that it will be released in June. So we all expect that it will be released in June. But would you, uh, would you like to say something on what we, we would expect to be in there uh, with regard to pitlands? what we hope uh, to, to read in, in, in that law, uh, being so important and being part uh, of uh, this uh, 
make it the EU Green Deal real? Absolutely, Leah. So the, the, the EU the nature restoration law is critical because that's really going to set the benchmark of what needs to be done. As I said in my introduction, 80% of the peatlands in Europe are outside the protected areas. So what we really need to do in terms of, of restoration is focus on that, those outside the protected series that haven't yet got a protective status. So my message to the, to the, to the, the commission and to the, the people that are finalizing the, um, the nature restoration law, please let's look at the peatlands, not only inside the protected, the protected areas, but definitely outside the protected areas, because that's where 80% is. Thanks a lot. And uh, I would like just to inform our uh, friends uh, listening to this uh, video that uh, you will be um, giving other lectures or uh, you will be speaking in other uh, videos where we will be uh, focusing on specific policies, uh, pitlands for climate or pitlands for uh, specifically restoration and other topics. So I just invite uh, our friends to stay tuned uh, for the next videos where you will be speaking about pitlands and uh, also invite uh, those who will be listening to us today to uh, use the hashtag ask wetlands to ask you uh, all questions about pitlands today. Thanks a lot again and see you soon. Thank you, Leah, and goodbye. Bye-bye.